Hey guys, happy to be here. Today I'm going to walk you through virtual machines and how you would use these to cut both upfront uh, machine costs, ongoing electric costs, and future upgrade costs in your own house. Uh, this way you don't have to have maybe a, a home automation machine, a, maybe you're running Plex as a DVR, uh, camera software. Um, you can also use this for personal things like Quicken or Adobe or things to that effect and I'll walk you through how I'm doing that. I'm going to show you what my box looks like. I'm going to show you the VMware workstation. I'm finally going to log into one of these machines and, and so you see how easy that is. I'm not going to walk you through the VMware setup. There's a thousand YouTube videos on that. All I'll say is you install VMware on a stick, uh, you plug into your desktop, you boot it up, and off you go. All right, so let's go start by taking a look at that machine. This is my VMware host. I opted to get a mini ITX box. What that means is that's a Blu-ray drive. It's a small form factor. It's barely wider than the size of my palm. It's not even as big as a keyboard. I decided I did not want to put all my hard disks into this thing. Um, I wanted to use a separate unit like a Synology because uh, these guys do a real nice job with all the RAID stuff. And I've had problems over the last 10 years uh, with hard disk arrays, failing, etc. So this way, I don't have that machine die if this machine... Uh, has problems and I can pretty easily upgrade the CPU or the RAM in this thing I can get a bigger machine without uh, worrying about uh, RAID controller compatibility and you don't really need to sit on here sit down here a lot at your machine because once you install VMware on the host it's gonna just show a console like that and you do all the work from the VMware workstation which I'm gonna show you so that way you put all your stuff in a, a separate location and you work from the comfort of your own couch uh, doing whatever you need to do let's go take a look to log into that VMware workstation view, it's actually called the VMware vSphere client. So you uh, double click on that, you type in your user ID and password. And this thing does take about 30 seconds uh, to connect in. I'll uh, crop the video for when it comes back. And here it's coming back. And uh, you see what it does is it tells me here's the IP address of the host. This is the free version of the software, which means I don't have things like clusters where I have many uh, hosts sitting on uh, one machine. Uh, but that's really uh, overkill for what I have. So you'll see here green indicates the virtual machine itself is on. So I right now have four uh, different Windows instances all running on that one. I have one for uh, CQC. I have one for PlayOn and Blue Iris, And I have one just for Plex. Uh, and then this user is the Adobe uh, Quicken, etc. that I talked talk to you about earlier. So if you want to take a look in what's going on, you can right click in and open up a console. You can also RDP into uh, that one if you want to take a look and see what specs that I have uh, for each of these things. Then you just click edit settings and um, <clears throat> it does take a couple seconds. And you see uh, this is a virtual cores, so a quad core machine is um, uh, what's it called? Hyper threaded. So a quad core machine will actually have eight different cores in it. So of those eight cores, I gave this thing three of them. I gave it three gig of RAM because uh, this thing doesn't really need a lot. Um, Plex, I gave Plex a whole lot more uh, because as you guys know, it'll uh, stream uh, high def. So I gave that thing six cores with eight gig of RAM. And then finally, uh, play on as well. And if you want to take a look at how each of these things are going, you click in here and you click performance and you can see um, this is the resource graph. So you can see here, you know, how much is this machine taking? Obviously, you could do this through uh, Windows Performance Monitor in that box as well. Um, or you could take a look at this at an overall machine level where, uh, and I'm not going to go through all the intricacies of the vSphere client because, again, there's YouTube videos uh, on that. Um, but what you can do is take a look at your machine as a whole um, and take a look, for example, what is it that I have here? I have CPU real time, right? So you take a look here. Here's what my CPU real time looks like. It's not running even hardly at 50%, even though I have all these machines running. We're home automation, Plex, I got play on, I'm sorry, Blue Iris is recording on motion uh, for three different cameras. Uh, so you can see here, it really makes no sense for me to have a different physical machine for each one of these things, even if it's low wattage. Um, four things all put together are all equaling a single machine here. So that's what this view looks like. If you wanted to add a new machine, it's as simple as right click, new virtual machine. 
and then there's a bunch of steps that you go through where uh, you tell it how much RAM you want and what kind of operating system, etc. Right? Um, and um, I'm just gonna go custom here, right? And then you can say here, maybe I want to have this be my, you know, YouTube demo VM. Obviously, I would never really have it call that, right? And you go through all the uh, a bunch of different where do you want how much storage do you want to give it CPU RAM how much access to the network etc and then um, boom there's a machine and then you would initialize it the same way you would with anything else where you go get your uh, Windows um, uh, files and you and you load it up into there um, I actually uploaded a copy of Windows 7 and Windows 8 as a base and then I just type in a new license key because then you can just uh, just buy a license key itself from Microsoft Online and then um, then you can go through the registration etc. So that's what this view looks like. Now let's take a look at how it actually is to connect into one of these. Now to so we'll log into one of these machines you'll see I'm sitting at the, the most my little cubby area when I'm not at that desk. Um, I have this Minix box, which is like 190 bucks with Windows 10 embedded on it. And I know there are a lot of stuff that's a USB extender. It's an AB switch if I have my laptop back here and it's a general charger, right? Um, I'll get to the cable cleanup. Um, so if you, want, if you don't believe me that this is the Minix box, what we can do is right click more properties, right? And you'll see here this is just an atom with four gig it's got windows embedded actually sitting on here so then all you do is you use rdp to um connect into the machine and i gotta pause this so i can type in the password okay i'm back and you'll see this is my home automation vm and so i got cqc up and running but it looks just like any other machine you would you can interact with what you want Right, and then for those of you who haven't used RDP, you can minimize this and you get back to your regular session. You can even open up uh, multiple um, H uh, RDP sessions to take a look at all the different machines at once. So that's all there really is to interacting with this thing. And now, boom, I don't need to have all these different machines uh, run 24-7 sucking up that really expensive PG&E juice. Uh, so that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.